So here are the five platforms, and I'm going to go quickly through uh, this presentation, understanding it's after dinner, uh, and this may not be as entertaining as most after-dinner speakers are. <laughs> but anyway, convergence. So this idea of exponential growth, finally it did get some respect. We do have a, a, a poster child, actually from this city, um, Amazon. Boy, were, the, were we fighting battles back in the early 2000s as we were going through the tech and telecom bust and then coming out of it. Nobody believed that Amazon could grow revenues at a compound annual rate of 25% per year on average um, for 20 years. And we were fighting that battle and fighting that battle and fighting that battle, and it finally paid off. But boy, um, uh, back then, even when indexes weren't as powerful in terms of an attraction for investors, it was really hard to convince investors that we would see such exponential growth. Uh, well, we did, and, um, and, and uh, some people now do believe it's possible. What we are saying now is that we are going into a super exponential growth world because those five major innovation platforms around which we have centered our research and investing, they are converging. And so what we have are the equivalent, so all of you in the innovation world understand what an S-curve is, you know, start out slowly and then you get into the sweet spot. Well, what we have now are S-curves feeding S-curves. They're feeding each other, and we think creating explosive growth opportunities. Uh, and you can see that uh, from the purple here that AI, which touches almost every other um, technology on, on, on um, this sphere, um, that it is the major catalyst. We're uh, putting a paper out, um, I think it will be uh, later this month or de early December, on this concept of convergence. And um, Brett Winton, who's our chief futurist, uh, has actually analyzed um, which of the technologies are uh, the biggest catalysts for other technologies. It's a scoring system, which I definitely will not bore you with tonight. Uh, but you can see at the bottom there, it is, and you can also see from um, the depiction here, it is the most important of these technologies in terms of catalyzing other technologies. Um, which are the biggest beneficiaries of these technologies, these 14 technologies um, uh, uh, of this idea of convergence? We think it's autonomous taxi platforms. So autonomous taxi platforms uh, involve the convergence among three of the major, in major innovation platforms. Robotics, um, autonomous vehicles are robots. Uh, energy storage, they will be electric as the, the learning curve associated with drivetrain technology plays out. And, uh, and electric vehicles become much uh, less expensive than gas-powered gas vehicles and uh, artificial intelligence. So three, robotics, um, uh, energy storage, and artificial intelligence. So let's talk about learning curves to get a sense of, of the drama here. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, in the, uh, I'll give you a few. Of the five major innovation platforms, there are some stunning learning curves evolving here. Um, if, you, if you look at um, industrial robots, the learning curve, so as, as George mentioned, Wright's Law, which is we've centered our research on Wright's Law, and the biggest surprise to me in the investment world period, not just in the public world, but in the private world, is that others are not doing this kind of analysis. Uh, most people in the public uh, investment world do not know what Wright's Law is. Wright's Law is a relative of Moore's Law. Moore's law is a function of time. Wright's law is a function of units. Now that the semiconductor world has slowed down in its cadence, it's kind of hitting a wall, uh, Wright's law 
is getting the semiconductor forecasts um, right, uh, 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 or is doing a better job at forecasting what's going on in the semiconductor world than Moore's law is. Wright's law says for every cumulative doubling in the number of units produced, cost decline, costs associated with each technology uh, decline at a consistent percentage rate. So in the world of industrial robots, again, we've centered our research, we're doing this research, we give it away because we think there are such inefficiencies uh, in the investment world around innovation, definitely in the public marketplace. So what's the learning curve of industrial robots? 50%. Now this is why technology is extremely deflationary. We hear all this talk about inflation going on, and I just wrote a tweet, uh, just put up uh, the Bloomberg Commodity Price Index from 1980 to today. It hasn't gone anywhere. We're at the same place, and everybody's talking about it. So, uh, I actually think, uh, for those of you who have studied economic history, that uh, we're probably closer to a chondroti of wave uh, uh, on the downside than most people understand right now. And helping it along are going to be all of these technologies. So that 50% decline in industrial robots. For drive drivetrain uh, battery pack system technology, that number is 28%. That's why Tesla can cut its prices and still be profitable. Uh, and I think the auto companies are baffled because they're saying, well, we can't produce these electric vehicles profitably, so we're not gonna do that because their shareholders don't want them to do it. I don't know what's gonna happen to them. Uh, all I know is this gives Tesla more room to run because the competitors are starting to, to back away. Um, in the uh, multi-omic sequencing space, or DNA speak, uh, sequencing specifically, uh, that learning curve is 40%. Again, a 40% drop in costs for every cumulative doubling in the number of whole human genomes sequenced. Um, and we're at a very low, low base, so we're gonna see many cumulative doublings. Uh, and we're already down to $200 to $400 in DNA sequencing costs. Um, in, in the case of uh, artificial intelligence, um, we, we, uh, the, the data metric here to, to compute Wright's Law is it's a relative compute unit and it involves a, 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 a metric involving data per compute unit. Um, for every cumulative doubling in that metric, cost declined by 48%. Now, the, the showstopper here, or the aha moment for us, was, okay, we, we did that, but AI training costs, when you, you, when you combine both hardware and software, are dropping 70% per year. So what does that mean? the cumulative doubling is taking place in less than a year's time. That's why what's going on today is so provocative. Um, all right, uh, here are just some examples. We know that, uh, uh, we didn't know it actually, uh, but it did take transformer architecture for uh, Tesla to begin to tr believe truly that it was going to be able to um, complete the last mile in autonomous driving. Uh, so these are just a few of the convergences. Um, this is uh, DNA sequencing, 60% uh, more accurate because of the convergence between uh, DNA sequencing and artificial intelligence. Again, this is in our big ideas. You can look up the details. Um, uh, yes, this is robots uh, and the convergence of robots and artificial intelligence and just how much uh, better they perform, whether they've done tasks before, but especially if they have not done tasks before, uh, given this convergence. Uh, battery uh, advances, so just uh, three times the, the battery capacity. This is since the iPhone, uh, three times the energy density. 
And uh, now we're talking about uh, Meta Platforms uh, Ray-Ban smart glasses. So our analyst um, uh, and also assistant portfolio manager, Nick Groose, uh, bought some of these glasses, went golfing, I think with Dan, if I'm not mistaken, and had these glasses on all day. They didn't run out of battery power. Now they did need a 10, a 10 minute uh, recharge every once in a while, but he was taking pictures of them playing golf, golf all day and, it, and uh, it didn't run out. Could not have happened without uh, the advances in, um, oops, sorry about this. Uh, Yes, uh, reusable robots. Here we just give the example. Uh, if you remember in the tech and telecom bubble, Iridium was one of the poster children <laughs> of that age. And you can see how much a phone cost and how much uh, more expensive it, it was per minute compared to terrestrial phones and minutes. Uh, and it was, it was uneconomic at that time and of course went bankrupt. Uh, today, the combination of T-Mobile and SpaceX has collapsed that altogether. So pretty exciting there. Crypto, cryptocurrency, so uh, what kind of convergence there? Uh, we worked with Square or Block um, uh, uh, a couple of years ago on a report which showed that if you, uh, if you um, incorporate Bitcoin mining into a utility ecosystem. So think about this. This is, this is convergence uh, of uh, battery technology and, uh, and Bitcoin in this case. Um, what you can do is overbuild solar and wind because what, what are we dealing with in that utility ecosystem? Huge battery storage systems that in the case of Florida, they fill up the sunshine is wonderful in Florida. They fill up uh, and then the, the energy would be wasted beyond that. Instead now, uh, the, that energy is being allocated to Bitcoin mining and uh, earning utilities more money so that they can uh, overbuild uh, solar and wind. So another convergence that wasn't obvious until we faced the environmental question of Bitcoin and all the electricity that it was using. Uh, now there is uh, a, a sustainable element to this ecosystem. Um, GDP growth. Uh, as, as you can see from this chart, through history, technology has caused leaps in GDP growth. And you can see from, I think it was 1400 to 1900 or 1500 to 1900, uh, the world was growing about 0.6, this is real GDP growth, 0.6% um, uh, percent per year. And then those three platforms I mentioned earlier, uh, telephone, electricity, internal combustion engine, of course, transistor, uh, um, uh, computers, internet, uh, then that catapulted us into a 3% GDP growth world. The consensus view going forward is that GDP is going to downshift. We completely disagree. And we believe that we, we should see a greater growth um, increment than we saw uh, in the period, uh, in the last period. So that was fivefold. Which, which would take us to 15%, but we didn't want to seem completely crazy. So we, uh, we put 8% uh, out there. But, you know, it doesn't make any sense that GDP growth should slow down given all of the innovation that is evolving right now. And the other thing that makes no sense is that inflation will remain a problem. There are two, two camps right now on inflation. One, and many of you, Stanley Druckenmiller has been interviewed a few times, so you've probably heard him on, um, on Bloomberg or CNBC, beloved <laughs> CNBC. Uh, and he's very much in the higher for longer inflation. We're in the 70s. This is intractable. Look at the wage negotiations, the UAW, the, the auto companies, the airlines, 10% per year, 6% per year. 
And uh, our answer to that is many of these industries are going to be disrupted, disintermediated, and perhaps destroyed. And so what will happen is that those wage gains will end up crushing margins. This is not going to be pushed through into inflation. Uh, and uh, if anything, we believe that we're going to enter a period of deflation. Now, I know deflation sounds scary. Sounds scary because of 08, 09. Uh, everyone was talking about a deflationary bust back then. And it was horrifying. And, you know, it, it, it was terrifying in, in many ways. Um, because there was uh, almost a complete uh, financial meltdown. That's not what we're talking about right now. There's good deflation and there's bad deflation. I just gave you an example of what bad deflation will be. Companies that have not invested aggressively enough uh, to move into the new age, and they're going to be disruptive, uh, disrupted, creative destruction. Um, the good deflation is what I described before. Those learning curves uh, causing cost declines, which are passed through to prices, uh, which, uh, which will cause booms, booms, absolute booms in these technologies and in productivity. And the virtuous cycle that we're going to see is, is going to be astounding.